Welcome back to the OK Preps Roundup, powered by Excel Therapy. I'm your host, Michael Knight. This is our class 4A preview. If you missed any of the 5A preview in hour number one, you can go back and watch it. That's the power of DVR. We're also going to have coaches' interviews throughout the day with our Roundup Rewind. So if you want to get a specific coach interview played, wait for that later on this afternoon. We'll post them as soon as we get them. And joining us now live in our OK Prep studio is the head coach at Ulaga, Brandon Craig. They finished the runner-up in Class 4A the last couple of years. Coach, thanks so much for uh, coming in studio this morning. You bet. Glad to be here, man. Absolutely. And, you know, when we talk about the storylines to follow uh, this season in 4A, one of the things that people are going to be talking about, obviously the Ulaga Mustangs, they've made it to the title game the last couple of years, hasn't gone the way you obviously want, and you got to – try to avoid buffalo bill territory i talked about that a little bit uh at the beginning of this hour how if you make it back again walk away with another silver ball people are going to start making those comparisons yeah. to the bills in the 90s what has been different this offseason compared to the last couple or have things changed uh you know with this program and spring ball and offseason workouts just talk me through the offseason you guys have had compared to the last couple well, our, our kids have been really committed, and, and the fact that uh, we lost a couple of really good players last year, we've had a lot of young kids step up, and our numbers actually have gone up, so we have a lot more kids out, and uh, we're just seeing that those young kids are taking faster steps to get better, and uh, a lot of that comes from the mentoring of the old guys that have been there and the expectations that are on the program. Obviously, we, we don't want to come up short. We want to win the big game, and uh, you know our, our kids are really pushing hard to get to that point. Let's start on defense with some of the guys who are coming back. You got to replace Jimmy McKinney, and obviously, mm -hmm. you know he's a very talented player. That's why he's going to Kansas State uh, at linebacker. But one guy who you do return is defensive end Brock Martin, an OSU commit. And I, I'm just still, even to this point, blown away with what he was able to do last year. When you think about the fact that he tore his ACL in what late May, May. came back yeah. mid midway through the regular season, and, and not only did he come back, but he came back with a vengeance, recording yeah. 18 sacks nearly 100 tackles what has he done this offseason to get better because look if that's what he did with half of a season coming right. off a torn acl what's he going to do this year uh it's unbelievable what he's done i mean you talk about mental toughness and you talk about setting goals and lots of people can talk about it but that kid lives it on a daily basis i mean he rehabbed three times a day getting himself back last year and since the injury he's continued to, to work and grow uh he's gone from about a 198 at the end of wrestling season to weigh in 231 the other day at the start wow. of practice so he's he's worked his rear off and he set a great example for our team and a lot of guys have followed him and, we, and we've got a lot of good guys coming back on defense nine starters coming back and it's going to be a really strength of our football team and on the flip side the offensive side of the ball you do return your quarterback casey base he has to find a new number one target with the graduation of Braden to spain which I, I was talking with our producer joshua here we were watching some of the uliga collinsville game from last year he took the opening kick back and, and i just told him i was like look Braden to spain might be one of the more underrated players yeah. last year because i think to be honest I think he's so much better than, than Central Arkansas. I think he's a, a power five caliber receiver. Yeah. And, and you got to find someone to replace him. What's the receiver core looking like? It's been awesome. We had a great summer. We had a bunch of kids step up uh, that, that it's probably going to be spread around more than as, as much as Braden touched it last year. But uh, they really stepped up. They've worked on their route running. They've worked on their spacing. And, you know, our quarterback's a good leader, so he, he knows how to get those guys out there and get after it. We uh, – we actually won the Lincoln Christian Passing League tournament this summer, and I don't put a lot of merit in that, but it's <laughs> something that uh, it's it's good for our kids because you know they were all thinking that since Braden was gone, we weren't going to be able to throw the ball at all. But I think that we have more targets now that are developing than we probably had in the past. Talk about the quarterback specifically. Casey ha had such a good year, but again, you know, he had Braden yeah. almost as a security blanket to throw mm -hmm. to because he's such a big target at oh, six yeah. foot three, six foot four, and, and can have that you know speed burst. He's a mismatch every time he stepped on the field. How has Casey progressed as he heads into this year, knowing he doesn't have that security right. blanket anymore? Like you mentioned, right. he has more targets to to, to distribute the yeah, ball to. Yeah, and, and he, Casey had a great understanding of our offense, and I think now that that Braden's gone, he's going to have even a greater understanding, and, and it's showing up in practices early already because he's going through more progressions. He's seeing when a guy's covered a little better than, say, they could cover to Spain, that he's going to have to go to his second, third options. And, and he's doing a great job with that. And like I said, we have a lot of kids that are 
that are doing a great job of getting open and finding ways to get the ball in their hands and make those make those yards. They don't have to score every time. We tell them that you just gotta you gotta make a catch, make right. four yards, and, and keep the offense moving. What do you expect to learn from this team in the non-district schedule? You open up w with a brutal <laughs> season opener, one yeah. of the toughest season openers yeah. in the state. You take on Collinsville. We have them ranked uh, number one in Class 5A, uh, and for good reason with mm -hmm. all the talent they have. You also have a, a Sky Took team on, on that schedule in the non-district play. They've been a contender in 5A mm -hmm. the last couple of years. What do you expect to learn from your team uh, at the end of September as you head into a, a tough district? Well, I schedule those guys for a reason. It, they're going to expose our weaknesses, and it's going to help us to kind of clean that stuff up before we get to district. So you play good teams for a reason. They're going to make you better. You may not – the outcome may not always be what you want. You know, there's been years when I've gone in district one and two, two and one, three and oh. But, you know, the situation is those guys are going to expose your weaknesses and help you to fix those before you get to your district. Our district's one of the toughest in the state by far. I mean, I, I look at it from top to bottom, and every year it's a very competitive district. You know, you look, you look at Wagner – and what they've done over the years, and then Cash Hall, Coach Medina and his bunch, what they've done over the years. Yeah. Katusa, throw them in there, and then McLean every year is going to be a very, very good football team. So, uh, you know, it, it gets us ready. And if you look at our district record over the years that we've been there, uh, it's been really good. And I think that, that, that non-district schedule attributes to that. Let's talk Wagner. Let, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Bulldogs, yeah. uh, the, the the bulldog in the room, so to speak. Yeah. As you know, the last couple of years you've met up with them not mm -hmm. once but twice. You got them in district play. Uh, you haven't been able to get on the better end of that. Then you meet them in the championship game the last couple of years. How have you seen the? And again, I, I talked to you about this last year. How it's become a good rivalry in four A yeah. football. Seeing Wagner and Ulog. Uliga play a couple times each year. It's been fun to watch. I know it hasn't been necessarily fun for Uliga fans the last couple of years, but it's t turning into a pretty good rivalry in 4A football. How do you get over the edge with Wagner? Is it you know a mental thing at this point, or, or what has to happen? It's not a mental thing. It, it's it's one of those things where if you look at what's happened, um, the first year that we were in the state championship, we played a very tough semifinal game against Fort Gibson. We were all ecstatic to be there. You know, it was a learning process. The next year, we go out and we play Poto in the semifinals. When we finish that game, our kids are not jumping through the roof or anything like that. They're thinking about, we're going Wagner. to play Wagner. And that football game last year, and, and win or lose, however you want to look at it, uh, that was a great high school football it game. It was. I mean, it was a very physical. I went back and watched it the other day. It was one of the most physical games you'll see. People were really getting after each other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just – it's a highly competitive league and, and it's a highly competitive uh, class. And uh, you just have to go out there and, and play your butt off each week and be ready to go and stay healthy. That's a big key. And uh, for us, you know, we're going to do what we know we have to do and that's get better each day in practice to try to get over that hump. Coach, we'll get you out of here on this. What is the biggest key? If you had to look at your team – Look at the schedule. You know, obviously the challenges that await are, are obvious. Uh, you know, Wagner's still in that district. Heritage Hall moves up from 3A. Mm -hmm. They've been dominant in 3A. How dominant they can be in 4A, we'll wait and see. There's also, you know, some other contenders, traditional powerhouses like Tuttle, Clinton, Ada in the class that will be contending this year. If you had to pinpoint one thing that has to happen for Uluga to take that next step and win the state title this year, what would it be? What's the biggest key? Well, I told to our, I told our guys this morning at practice this. We have to take care of the little things. We know we know the scheme. We know the big picture. We got to do everything little right so we can take that next step. You know, doing the little things wins the big games, and that's what we have to do. We have to make sure that we're doing everything we can to get to that next level. Coach, thanks so much you for bet. joining us here in studio. He's Ula Guy, head coach Brandon Craig. I'm Michael Knight, your host of the OK Preps Roundup.